Yes, welcome to the Cruiser RC. Um, just went out tonight to the local hobby shop because they got one of my orders in and I picked up some parts and an order that I made and some other things that I needed while I was there. And I just thought I would go over some of that. It's been a couple months since we last did one of these. Actually, the last one we did of this, I, uh, I believe I talked about how I got a bunch of wheels and tires for a bunch of comps that happened. And those have all since happened. Those are all on the channel. So you can go and watch some of the on-road racing where I use the Gravity RC tires uh, in on-road racing, as well as the off-road event that I did for Call to Crawl event one with the uh, J Concepts landmines. And this is kind of under similar circumstances that I needed parts for all the racing and event stuff that I do. And I just thought I would go over some of that, uh, just an impromptu live chat while I'm out in town here before I go home. So uh, hello, welcome people who have joined. We have four joining in and we'll probably get some more during the stream. Also, you may notice that the vehicle I'm in looks different. Hmm, yes, I'm in a new vehicle. I have not disclosed that on the channel yet, but I did get a new vehicle, so. Uh, I will be showing some of that on the channel as well as I have a separate cars channel, Net Cruiser Cars, that I'm trying to grow to the first 1,000 subscribers this year. And uh, I've been putting a lot of my old Honda Pilot stuff on that. And this vehicle, as you can probably tell by the vertical rear window, is again and you know somewhat of an off-road vehicle. So I will be doing more off-roading type stuff in this, showing what this vehicle can do. And then a lot of the techie stuff that this car can do, I will put on this channel because a lot of that stuff has done very well over the years, showing what I could do with the infotainment on my Volkswagens. This is a different brand, a brand that I've never owned before. And I'll show some of that later, but it may be a couple weeks before I get that content out. This video is going to be about RC stuff, purely about RC. And the first thing that I needed was a Tamiya part. This is spare parts, the G set for a TT-01. And if you strip out the spur gear on a TT-01, you cannot buy just the spur. You have to buy this set which is the spur gear, the ring and pinion, the diff cup. It's all the gears that come in a TT-01. And the only way, as far as I know, the only way that you can get the stock spur gear size, which is a 55, I think. Don't quote me on that. It is whatever. It's the, it's the specific tooth size that's on a TT-01. You can only get it in this pack or by buying another TT-01. So... There is an option spur gear set for TT-01. It does not include the stock tooth size for TT-01. So if you are running a truck class or a TTGT class, you need this. You can't run the optional gears. You have to run box stock gearing. So that's why I needed this. I only need one part of every, out of everything that's in here, but now I've got a spare diff set if I blow a diff or something. So you get ring, pinion, uh, and the spur. You only get one spur, but that's really what I needed. So yeah, there was that part. And then um, if you've watched any of my racing events over the last few years, and this is something that happened last year, I ran uh, the, what was it called? Clay Masters. It was a Clay Masters event and I ran my stadium truck, my team associated T6.2. And during that event, and this was in October of 2021, I first talked about this. I noticed that I was getting a lot of inconsistent slip on my stadium truck and uh, after diagnosing a little bit, as far as I can tell, I did glaze my slipper pads and I haven't actually fully disassembled it because I didn't have the parts. And something I've learned is that even though I'm running the latest and greatest team associated stadium truck, the T6.2, RC10 T6.2, uh, that vehicle has an Octolock slipper gear, but they, it, they give you the older style pads. So it's no wonder you're running a heavier vehicle with bigger wheels and tires. I think there's more stress on the slipper system on a stadium truck than there is on a buggy just because you're putting so much more traction through the system and, and sneaky little buggers on Team Associated. They gave you all of the good gearing, the newest gearing that came out in the B6.3 buggy uh, where it had the ability to have the Octolock slipper pads, but it didn't include them. So it had the older style slipper pads this is the Octolock slipper pad set. And so this is what I am going to put in my stadium truck. So these are, uh, it is a different type of material as well as it locks into the spur gear. So these are a lot more, 
I think there's a lot more friction to these and they can handle a lot more heat. And this is what comes in all of the newer buggies. Uh, the B6.3, the new B6.4 all has these. If you're building a new stadium truck, it might be worth ordering this as an option set because it doesn't come in the kit. You get the older style slipper set with this one. Then um, for my crawling events, I mentioned that I have a uh, Axial SCX 10.3 early Bronco that I did some mods to and I've shown some of that. And just in the past week or so, I was just out playing around with it and I'm pretty sure my dig servo failed. Um, it's, that vehicle's only two months old, maybe only has six or so runs on it. Um, when I flick the channel to use the micro servo, which locks the rear axle as a dig function, which lets you lock the rear end, which then pivots the front. So you can do much shorter turn radiuses uh, instead of it being an open wheel and taking a long time to turn around, you lock the rear and it just drags the rear end around and you can almost pivot nearly 180 on itself. It is a very useful function for doing competition crawls. And anyway, my little analog dig servo that it comes with, this is a ready to run vehicle. It seems to have died. It's, again, I haven't taken it fully out to fully diagnose it yet. But while I was at the shop, I was just remembering that that happened. And there is some competitions coming up in the next two weeks. There is an event at uh, Warsaw Caves. Uh, I believe it's June 18 that weekend. It's almost fully booked up. If you haven't already scheduled to go, you probably can't get in. But uh, yeah, it's a uh, GCM crawl event at Warsaw Caves. And uh, anyway, dig servo. I ended up buying the stock one. I was in there for quite a while just researching, what do I want to do? Do I want to upgrade it? I was looking at options for, for micro servos that I could put in. I almost bought the Power HD, but then I remembered that, of course, it's a Spectrum-based system, Horizon Hobby with their Spectrum-based servos, 23 to spline. I don't have any, I don't have any other 23 tooth spline equipment other than what comes in these Horizon Hobby vehicles. So if I was to upgrade my micro servo, then I was going to have to buy a servo horn and a servo saver and, and then probably like shim the mount a little bit. It was going to end up costing me twice as much money. I had it all in my hand. I was going to buy the upgraded servo. I was going to buy the 25 tooth spline that you need and then, you know, fab it up and, and do it. And I was like, this is going to cost over $60, whatever, 25 bucks for the stalker. If it blows up again, it blows up again, as well as this will just let me quickly replace that servo and then decide and then open up the stock one and find out what happened to it. Did I chip a tooth or is it actually electronically dead? Uh, as well as it should be under warranty. Uh, I don't actually know what Horizon Hobby and Axial's current warranty is, but it should be should be within a couple months for sure, if not a full year. I don't think they are a full year anymore, but it's probably within 90 days or so. Anyway, um, stock bog standard micro servo, but if you... Oh, the other thing is if I do end up resurrecting the micro servo that came in that vehicle, now I've got two of them, so I can run the two-speed and the dig uh, but in order to do that, you do have to upgrade your radio system as well. So if you, the radio system comes with the axials, uh, currently is the DX3. The base system uses all three channels. So if you want to have the two speed and the dig function at the same time, you need a four channel radio or higher. Uh, and I do have a DX5C, so I can pair, pair it with that and bind it up with that. Anyway, yeah. So those were the, uh, those were the three little things. And the last thing is a fairly big thing. It is an order that I put in when, when we found out about it, that they were coming out. I did a poll. Um, I don't do those polls just for nothing. I actually do take your, take your advice. And this was the winning model. So new two wheel drive buggy. Team Associated B6.4D. This is the brand new on the market Team Associated vehicle. Uh, I will, it's getting a little bit dark. I was thinking about just opening the box here and showing you some of the parts. Uh, actually, I might, I might. The chassis is a little different. Do I have my knife in here? Oh, let's see if I put anything new in this new vehicle. Well, actually my, my knife is over here. Yeah, we'll, we'll crack the box open for you. Been hearing good things about these. Yeah, the 6.4D. Hopefully, it uh, it does have quite a few geometry changes over the 6.3. Uh, it's almost to the point of, I don't know why they haven't just gone to the next number up yet, the B7. 
They just did that with the 8 scale. They went from a RC8B3.2E up to a B4, and it got a new chassis, new arms, new diffs, new shock towers, new everything. Very similar to this for how many changes they made, but this one is still sticking with that point point system. It's still a B6. It's just the newest B6.4. So who knows what the B7's ever gonna be? We've been talking about that for years, thinking when is there gonna be a B7? And we were all joking, you know, for the past couple of years that, oh yeah, everyone just buying these point point kits and then, you know, in six months or a year, they'll end up coming up with a B7 and we'll all feel out of date. Um, anyway, I, uh, I actually did last year end up buying a B6.3D and then I never ended up building it or using it because by the time I was ready to start building that kit, I had really liked the Yokomo and was enjoying the Yokomo. And uh, I had, I've had much higher luck with my Yokomo YZ2 than I ever did much with my TLR 22 5.0 Elite. Not saying there's anything bad with the 22 5.0 Elite. I've made my gripes about, you know, accessing the diff and it doesn't have hold ball cups and all that stuff. Just typical TLR things that they haven't updated yet. But, you know, there's people in our local club that love TLR and race TLR and can clearly beat me with their TLR. So... You know, it's not that the car is the problem. It was I couldn't find the right setup for it. I couldn't figure out how to drive it right. I've had much, much better luck with my Yokomo. So I am going to finish up. We're currently in an eight-week series. Uh, we just finished up uh, week five yesterday. So I'm going to finish up the ser that race series on my Yokomo. And then I will be running this. So I've just cracked the seals on it. I won't be, I won't be able to sell this one new like I did my 6.3. I ended up selling my 6.3D to another local racer and it's already been racing out the past three or four weeks. And he managed to beat me with it the very first time he went out, which was kind of funny. Um, yeah, we are, we are losing light, but uh, yeah, I mostly just wanted to show you the chassis and the body. Now this is upsetting some people that the uh, the chassis has changed so much that the body shape has significantly changed. Uh, it may not be totally noticeable, but it is significantly wider further forward. So it takes a lot longer before it noses in. So this, this area here where it dips in used to, it used to be almost a pure angle from back here, it would narrow in. So now it stays wider further out and then narrows in near the very nose. And part of why they did that was they've moved a lot of the, the things forward. So you can now run your electronics more forward biased. So you, the whole um, electronics tray and the battery system can move forward more than you ever could on the 6.3D. So I'm just gonna pull the chassis out so we can take a look at the chassis. So here's the 6.3D chassis and it is a significantly different shape than the, sorry, what did I say? I probably said 6.3. This is the 6.4 chassis, 6.4D, which also gets a different chassis than the 6.4. The 6.4 is for carpet, 6.4D is dirt specific. Uh, there is a, a length difference of the vehicles. I believe the dirt one is shorter. Uh, I think it says on here that it's zero, yeah. It actually, I don't know if that's gonna come through, but it actually says on there, 6.4D, zero, uh, plus zero. So they don't actually specify the length. You have to look at the wheelbase on the specs and a lot of the time their specs are wrong. As far as I know, this has the exact same wheelbase as the 6.3, but what, is, what has changed is, as I've mentioned, it is, it is wider further forward, which allows you to move everything forward. So you have more room to move your battery forward, electronics forward, servo stays somewhat similar, but they've changed the kick up too. So the kick up angle, I believe is more acute and they've mentioned that they had designed this so that it uh, has less friction on chassis impacts. So yeah, there's, there's changes to that. The other big change on this kit is, well, there's actually some, as I'm looking at this, there's actually some things that they took out. On the 6.4, you always, on the older models, you always used to get a layback and a lay down. Now you only get one transmission in this kit, and I believe it's the lay down. So I can't, I can't run a layback anymore, but the stadium truck that I have, the T6.2, th those, as far as I know, those transmissions are compatible. So I do actually have the, the version that I don't get in this and I can swap it back and forth with my stadium truck. So that's also part of the reason I'm doing this 
is, uh, I mean, you guys did win the, the voting did clearly indicate that the associated was the preferred choice over some of the other options, but this is also beneficial to me in that I have a T6.2 stadium truck, which does have a few compatible parts. The slipper, the slipper and the transmission, I believe is the big one. Um, so as it gets darker and darker here, we're, we're getting running out of time and light, but I just want to see if I can find the shocks. Where are my shocks? Everything. This is going to be the last thing I pull out of the shocks. What is this? Uh, nope. It is going to be the last thing I pull out. Where are they? Hmm. Sorry guys. Live, live stream. No editing. So my mistakes you get to see. <laughs> There's the oil. Oh, what oil do you get? Uh, just standard 30 weight oil, nothing special, just 30 weight all around, I guess. Where the heck are the shocks? Anyway, the shocks are bigger. They've gone to a 13 millimeter body. So it's only a one mil difference. I doubt you would be able to tell, but just by holding them up anyway. But uh, yeah, the shocks are slightly bigger and it's so dark in here, I can't really, I can't really find it. Anyway, that's the update. I bought a new kit. So... Yeah, Team Associated, more Team Associated two-wheel drive stuff will be coming to the channel um, that I'll be showing off how a B6.4D works on the Electrosport RC track. So that will be the plan. That'll be coming out uh, probably in the next month or so. Like I said, I am going to finish off the series that we're doing right now with my Yokomo, which will be probably four more weeks of videos uh, before I finish that up on YouTube. And then... By that time, then there'll probably be a build series coming out. So it might be late summer uh, by the time we get to see a B6.4D video. It depends on how motivated I get to start building this and showing it. As I have a lot of other stuff kind of interweaved that I wanted to uh, produce in between some of these racing videos that I'm doing, uh, I did recently just do a bunch of fun stuff with RC. So I actually have some bashing content coming out soon that you should enjoy. Uh, I ran a bunch of fun stuff. I ran my laser nut. I ran my X Max finally on 8S at the skate park. <laughs> Aired out, baby. It was fun. Anyway, so yeah, all that stuff's coming soon. So if you like RC stuff and you're not a subscriber, definitely subscribe because we got more stuff coming. All right, guys, that'll be it for now. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, hit that like button. If you're new on here, subscribe. If you want to talk to me, leave a comment down below. Or in the live chat right now, we got a couple seconds before I leave if you have something you wanted to ask while you have me here live right before I go. But uh, yeah, new kit. Hey JK from Round Rock, Texas. Hi. Nice to meet you. Hey Paul. Good to hear from everyone. Um, upcoming events, actually, quickly before I talk about that. Um, it is currently June 2nd, I believe. And what is coming up is... Uh, next weekend, there's, for car stuff, there's kind of a fairly big cars and coffee event in Oakville, Ontario, where the Throttle House people, I don't know if you watch any automotive style YouTube, but Throttle House is an excellent channel. They are hosting a get together and Chris Harris is going to be there. Um, so I might go to that. I don't know if that would hit this channel. I might, and if I do record stuff there, I might put it on the cars channel, that cruiser cars. Uh, there's a link to that channel in the video description below. Then after that event, the next weekend is Warsaw Caves, the crawl event. And then after that, we are now at the uh, kind of June 24th weekend. So June, June 12 is Cars and Coffee in Toronto. June 18 is Warsaw Caves crawling event. June 24 to 26 or something like that is J Concepts Outdoor Canadian Championships um, in Quebec. Uh, it's an eight scale event. So I will most likely be doing that with my techno RC EB48 2.0 as I am a sponsored techno driver uh, I certainly want to try and go to more of the eight scale style events and after that then we start kind of rolling into eight scale season so there will be almost every other weekend there will be either a club based Bego series eight scale race or uh, some other bigger events happening that uh, just depending on how motivated I get to go travel around to go to them uh, That will be probably primarily what I end up doing kind of mid to late summer is eight scales type stuff interwoven in with my weekly uh, club racing on 10 scale 
Unfortunately for the people who love the on-road stuff and were very happy that I got a couple of on-road videos out uh, in the early spring to, to early summer, um, our local club, our local on-road club is very much just like a pop-up style temporary track and they've shut down for the season. So uh, on-road is unlikely that I will get to another on-road thing unless I make it out to CTSR or uh, if I end up going to something like Kingston, which has a fairly regular on-road style track. But pr pretty much I'm dedicated to off-road for the summer and on-road would be more winter type stuff. All right, guys, thanks for joining in. Take care. See you all later.